Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Career Everywhere podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Metzger, and today I am joined by Laura Kessner Ricketts. She's the Executive Director of Career and Professional Development at Augustana College in Illinois. Thank you for being here, Laura. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited for today. Me too. And I am especially excited to have you on the show today to talk about how you're introducing faculty to the Career Center's resources. I think we all know that faculty can be incredible partners, but sometimes it it's hard to get them all up to speed on what the Career Center can offer in a scalable, effective way. So I'm really excited to dig into how you're doing that at Augustana. Um, but first, for those of you listening or watching, I want to give a little background on Laura. She has worked in career services for about 30 years, leading career centers at Clark College, Marquette, and now Augustana. She's also a former president of Midwest ACE. She's worked with thousands of students and hundreds of faculty members over the years, and she's developed a super cool method for introducing faculty to her career center's website and their resources in a really in-depth and interactive way in just 45 minutes, which is blows my mind. <laughs> uh, so before I get into all of that, Laura, is there anything else you'd like to add about yourself, your role, uh, or at your role at Augustana or your background? Oh, gosh. No, I mean, nothing crazy. <laughs> well, I, I will allude to it, but I am really a fan of life design and recently went through the um, life design studio at Stanford. And so if anyone wants to talk to me about that, reach out because I'd love to talk about it. Okay. I'm assuming you know Joe Catrino then, because he mentioned that on this podcast oh, a few did weeks he? ago. Okay. <laughs> there were a hundred of us in the session, so... I didn't know if he was in my session or not. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> well, cool. Okay, so before I get into the more specific questions about our topic, I want to ask you a question I've been asking all of our guests on this podcast, and that's what does career everywhere mean to you? Right. Well, I love the concept of career everywhere, and I, I use it a lot, and we've been using it a lot more, but really to me it means it's a concept of we never know when – some information or some interaction with the student is going to be like the missing piece that clicks for them and gets them into a, a different place. I can think of my own, you know, aha moment. And I was a sophomore in college and I met with someone and I'm sure she had no idea that she just uh, gave me the next step. Um, so I think it's really important to remember that every conversation we have, every interaction with student may have a piece to what their next step in their career is. So career happens everywhere, not just in a career center. It happens in the snack bar, at the coffee shop, walking down the, you know, icy steps, things like that. So <laughs> that's what it means to me. Oh, I love that. It's a team sport, really, is what mm -hmm. career everywhere is. Exactly. And you may <laughs> not even know that you're playing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. All right. So now I want to talk about how you're leveraging your faculty partners at Augustana and how you're training them on what the Career Center does and what your team can offer. I know you've recently launched a Career Readiness Champions Network there at Augustana. So can you maybe start by giving me a quick overview of what that entails and why you created it? Sure, sure. So I think a lot of campuses are really plugging into that idea of career everywhere, right? And, you know, when you think of everyone on campus, who has the most contact with students? It's really the faculty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're the ones that see them, at least during the semester, you know, um, every day or every other day. And so really tapping into faculty and also staff um, who work with student-facing positions. So what we wanted to do was really help um, make sure that those people who are interacting with students have the resources and tools that they need to really move a student um, through the process, make it easier for those students. And so we developed, um, we had our first cohort start in October. We decided to, to call it the Career Readiness Champions Network. It's not just faculty, so faculty and staff. And uh, the faculty and staff members were invited, and we got the names because in our end-of-the-year survey, we asked students 
um, to list someone on campus who had a positive impact on their career decision making or their career success. And last year we had 140 faculty um, and staff who were whose names were given to us. So we reached out to them, invited them, and of those, 41 um, signed up and wanted to be part of our network. So um, that's kind of how it got started. Okay, I love that idea of of including that question in the student survey. That's genius. <laughs> It's really great. It's really great. And then we know like who our partners are, right? We don't have to convert them. Right, exactly. So what does this program kind of entail? Like I think you mentioned before that it's several sessions. Can you kind of walk me through what those include? Sure. So it's a four sessions. We have four sessions and it's the whole academic year. So we know that you know, faculty are busy, everyone's busy, and this is really an add-on for them. And so this is not part of the tenure and promotion process. It's not something they get credit for, right? So we wanted to make it easy yet effective use of time. So we're doing four 75-minute sessions spread throughout the fall and spring semester. And the first session is really about what is career development. Now, our office, we're called Career Development and Vocation. We are, um, a, a, we're steeped in Lutheran t- traditions, but when we talk about vocation, we are not necessarily talking about um, a life in the church. We use the word as your, uh, sort of what, are you, what is your, how can you serve the world? That's how we use it, right? Um, And so career development and vocation, helping faculty and and staff understand what do we mean by career development um, and vocation, walking them through the career development process using some language that resonates with us. The second session is services and resources, so we'll circle back to that one, but really introducing them to all the things we do, right? Because everyone thinks we just do resumes, right? I'm the resume (laughs) lady on campus. (laughs) Um, The third one is called Career Conversations, and that's rooted in career conversations, career everywhere, right? So what are common career conversations? What are ways to help um, sort of draw out more information, maybe challenge um, them, helping faculty uh, to be more curious with students around it versus having a student say, I want to be this, and then show them how to be that really ask some questions. Tell me more about that. What what about that, um, you know, interests you? Do you think you have the skills? So really helping them with that. Um, and then the fourth one is really theory to practice. So what does this look like, right? Um, how might uh, a conversation move a student in telling and sharing stories? And then we are addressing the, the DEI, the diversity, equity, and inclusion. We know that so many of our students are coming from spaces and places that um, maybe they don't have the networks, right? They don't have the, the parents who have the old neighbors that can hook them up with a summer internship, right? So really making sure that um, faculty um, and staff are knowledgeable and understanding that not every student comes from a place where doing an unpaid internship in New York City, that's not really an option for most students. So how can we make sure that that's a part of the piece when, when working with students? So those are our four areas. Okay, sounds like a pretty good breadth of knowledge that the faculty will gain once they go through this program. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I would love to dig more into that second session. So the one that where you kind of really dig into the services that you offer and the resources available for students. Um, so can you just kind of walk me through what that session looks like? Sure, sure. And, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I want, I can take credit for some of it, but a lot of this really just comes from what we would say is active learning methods. So I was privileged at my uh, former institution to take a two-day course on active learning methods and how to better engage students, and that's where this came from. If people are interested in that, I would recommend that they reach out to their like faculty enrichment center or learning and uh, learning and I don't know what center. So they're called different things at different colleges. But that's how I was introduced to this type of activity. So basically, what we do is um, 
This was 45 minutes. And we've also incorporated this now into classes. So I do this with students now as well. We do this in person, but it can be easily moved to a virtual platform with breakout rooms. So first, basically, I introduce um, the, the group to our website, the platform. Um, one thing that we have good or bad is that this is the first time we've been able to manage the content on our own <laughs> website for careers. So we feel like um, probably everybody in the late 90s felt when they had their own website. Um, that's how we feel. So um, we're really excited just to share our new website with so many. But what we do is we introduce them to the website and then we brief Fully, briefly move them through what we would call our signature resources. The ones that I use uh, that we move people through is, uh, so I show them the whole website and then I go through these six. So one is our affinities, identities, right? So you Connect offers a platform that allows you to curate resources based on whatever you choose for affinities and identities. And so that's, I think, really important for our students to see that it's not just cookie cutter, but we do have information for our LGBTQ students or um, our international students, our students of color, um, all of that. So, so we have resources for them. The second one is Candid Career. So our place where students can see videos and learn more about um, careers from the person. Maybe I'm not supposed to explain each of these, but I'm going to. Is oh, that yeah, okay? go for it. Yeah, go okay. for it. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> the third is career paths. So this is where students can choose resources based on kind of what their what we call field of interest might be. So if I'm interested in environmental careers, then that's one of our career paths. The next one is the labor market insights. So if you're not familiar with the labor market insights, it's basically and I can't keep track of who owns it now, but it was Burning Glass, MC, I don't, I don't know who it is now. They're called but Lightcast now. Lightcast. Okay, <laughs> great. So this is, you know, real-time information about what are the trends, what are the job titles, all of that. So students can, instead of relying on the Bureau of Labor Statistics data, which I have done most of my career, students can find this. So the labor market insights can be used in a lot of different ways, and I think it's a really important tool. Um, the other one is our Viking Connections, which is basically our alumni network. So they can uh, see where, how the alumni who want to connect with students and help them. And the last one is Viking Score, which is basically our career um, pathing program. So students earn points for career activities um, that they complete including reflections and processing. So students earn points and um, then we give away prizes. We basically bribe students to do career <laughs> stuff. That's how I like to explain hey, it. Hey, you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to <laughs> do, right. So basically I walk them through that, but I don't do all of that. I just show them where they are and where this might be. Then I have them break into groups of six. Okay, so they go to and they actually move to a table with six people in each of the groups. And then I hand them a piece of paper that just says affinities, identities, and then I give the URL or kind of explain how to find it. So I give a stack of those six topics to the table and then they have to decide which person of those six wants, wants to research which topic, okay? So now they have their topics and then we set the timer. So we give them four minutes each and they spread out, we play music and they can use their phone, their laptops. We bring three laptops with us for people who wanna use that and we encourage them to take notes. So we basically say, you are responsible for learning everything you can about this resource. And then we give them four minutes. Doo -doo -doo. So they do that. Then after four minutes, we invite them to get into a different group with people who have their same topic. So all of the people who did Labor Market Insights, you get together. Then we give them another four minutes to just share. So, okay, so Meredith and I had the same topic. Meredith, what did you get? This is what I got. And then I might say, ooh, I missed that. You know, so again, listening, taking notes, learning from each other, okay? And after that four minutes, we invite them to go back to their home group, okay? So now they're with their original six. 
And we give each person two minutes to share everything they learned about it. So if we've got six people, then that's that's a 12-minute session. And we kind of give them some prompts, the general who, what, when, where, why, right? Who benefits from this? What is this resource? How can I use it? When would it be helpful to a student? Where do I access it? And why might someone find it useful? Um, so after, after 12 minutes then, we bring back everyone and we sort of just debrief on it. And this is where we hear overwhelmingly, you know, oh my gosh, I had no idea. This is so cool. We had faculty say, I'm go- this is perfect for what I'm teaching this week. You know, can you send me this? Um, I had two faculty say, hey, can you come in next week and do this activity with my students? Oh, that's awesome. Right? And so it is, I think it's just that learning by doing, right? This is literally active learning, right? And so um, it's just, we've been blown away. I did this with the admissions team also. Hmm. And so for them now, when they go out and when parents are asking questions, you know, they can just pull up the website and show them. Um, and UConnect has a place where we can have, we have affinity group for prospective families as well. So that's what's really, really great about it. So it's a really effective activity. Yeah, I love the sound of it, especially how interactive it is. Like I know thinking to my learning style, I'm the type that if I hear information, I have to immediately apply it or I will just forget it. <laughs> it goes right, in one right. ear, out the other. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, it's not a lecture at all. There's no lecturing at all. So it's great. Okay. I love how you, like you did it with faculty and staff, but also with the admissions team. That's super smart, especially when you have that community already built into your website. Right, right, right. I mean, they, they have me do a quarterly update um, for admissions. And so I just did that for them. (laughs) Yeah, that's perfect. You know, going through a report, that's what we did. It was sort of a modified version, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a great idea. And also for the folks listening or watching, I'll be sure to include a link to uh, Laura's website that she's talking about in the show notes. So you can go and check it out and see what she's talking about. And Uh, I do have, I do have this and I use a show flow for every presentation I do. So if anyone wants to reach out and email me, I'm happy to just share that because it has the details. Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's great. That'll be a great resource for folks. Good. So Laura, why, I mean, you kind of touched on it, but why did you structure this session in the way that you did? Well, the first, the first session that we did, which was basically what is career development and vocation, it was a lot of talking to them, explaining, uh, you know, we did have them kind of share their own stories about how they got where they were, It just felt very classroomy, you Mm -hmm. know, and I thought, you know, it's hard to get faculty and staff to make time. Um, How can I make this more engaging? And that's when I thought, oh, I need to go to my active learning thing. So kind of that's how we came up with it. We wanted to make sure there was some movement. We do these events after the last class, afternoon class of the day. So it's 415 um, to 530. I mean, it's mm. long. We do fee- give great food, but still it's a long end of the day kind of thing. Yeah. You got to have some active learning at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I like on the note of the structure, I also love how sh- like compact it is. I mean, it's 45 minutes that you are teaching all of these people mm-hmm. pretty much everything they need to know about your website. Like that's incredible. Yeah, it is. And so can you remind you more? (laughs) (laughs) Can you remind me how many people are were in this session? Was it the entire cohort of I think forty one people or was it it broken? We we offer two sessions of the same. So I mean, sometimes we get more or less, but I mean the groups weren't huge. Um, so there were maybe just three three or four groups. So it wasn't a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, still super efficient. You could do it, I think, with a much bigger group as well. I mean, that's what's great mm-hmm. about it. It's totally scalable. Yeah, for sure. Um, I am curious, what has been the feedback you've gotten from the faculty members who have participated or even the admission staff who have gone through the session? Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, um, 
I, I think I presented it in the fall and I got I think three or four emails from people that just said this is really amazing it's a game changer one of the things I didn't talk about was the outcomes so again once they see these six things and you can change up what you have them look at I actually think for admissions I had outcomes be one of them so they could see all of our FDS our first destination outcomes well they just locked onto that right <laughs> Um, to be able to then know how to use it and show the prospective families how it works, um, I think is is really important. So they loved it. Um, and, you know, I mean, all that data being so many of these families and anybody, right, they want to be able to see it. You can't just say, oh, our English majors get jobs, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's instead, not good which they do, right? But instead, we can say, here's where our English majors over the past seven years have landed. These are the job titles. These are the grad programs. It's right there. And it's just, again, show, don't tell, right, it is really the key. And then faculty. I mean, I had a, fa <laughs> I had a faculty member say to me, like, he got nominated. A lot of coaches got nominated because they helped them. And the coaches, like, I'm not connected with them at all. And when I say coaches, I mean athletic coaches. Mm. And one of them followed up and said, I cannot tell you how already I've changed how I work with students. And that was after the second session, right? He said, I had no idea. He said, I was an athlete in school, in college. I never connected with the Career Center. This is so beyond me. He's like, this is really great. And so now we're doing, you know, individual programs for some teams as a result. So, I mean, the, the wide-reaching impact of just sharing information um, is invaluable. Yeah, and I love, again, how active it is. It's not just, hey – here's a link to our website, explore on your own, because people may not have time or they'll forget. Yeah. It's like getting them in a room and saying, here, explore, and then let's talk about it. And if you have questions, right. I'll answer them. Right. And I think that's important to remember, right? When we say career everywhere, we're, we are really talking about career conversations everywhere, right? And so this is a great way to start a conversation. Um, it's just a tool that you can use when having those conversations. I love that. And I love that you've even gotten athletics involved. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, you know, we have a large group of all-American athletes. I mean, a big percentage of our population, you know, that, that's why they come to a, a D3 school to play. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so we want to make sure that we're reaching out to those kids. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I I know this is kind of a, a relatively new program and maybe you don't have like data results, but maybe more anecdotally speaking, what kind of results have you seen? I mean, really all I have is sort of the anecdotal. I can't, um, and I could probably go back and look. We do ask when students come in if they were referred by someone. So I have not had a chance to look at that. So that would be one data point to see if there are names on that referral that are also our career readiness champions. Um, like I said, we had another, we had uh, the athletic training department reach out to us now and they want to set up a pipeline for interns, mm -hmm. right? So again, that's just Jay came to our session and uh, so now we're working on an internship program with him. Um, so it's all those little tiny things. And it's just, you know, it's what happens when you develop relationships. Oh, that's great. I've, it seems to be kind of a common thread I've been hearing throughout these interviews is that it's not always the data that drives you. I mean, the, like improved data engagement is great. It's sometimes those individual stories, the students coming to you saying, hey, I got this job or I got this internship. Thank you. Or faculty, coaches coming to you and saying, hey, this totally changed the way I interact with students. I keep hearing over and over that that's kind of what keeps people going in career services. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we have we have this thing in our office. It's the um, the success bell. It's, it's called Ring for Success. So we have a bell. It's really cool. I should send you a picture. But the students come in and, and they ring this bell when they get a job, an internship accepted to a program. And I can tell you, like, we have a culture here that when we can, 
everyone drops what they're doing and we go out there and we clap and, and hear from that student and ring that bell. And, you know, that's really what it's all about. And just having a student then say, oh, I want to go in and ring the bell. Like that's super <laughs> exciting for them too. So. Oh, absolutely. I love that. It's a yeah. tangible way to celebrate the victory. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So earlier you mentioned that you, you kind of get people, uh, faculty to participate in this program, or one way you have is asking students in this end of year survey that you do. Mm -hmm. So once that happens, how did you go about getting that buy in from faculty convincing them to join this program? You know, I remember talking to a few people and they said, Oh, you'll be lucky if you get eight. <laughs> and I said, All right, eight's my goal. And I got 41 and you know for people coming from big schools they may think oh that's nothing right but that's a big deal <laughs> and I really didn't have to do a lot because again um, and I, I was planning on talking about this later but there there are people who um, you know when, when you talk about faculty they're on a spectrum of career and I know career can be a bad word um, on a college campus right because we've got on one end the people who are you know and I'm in a private liberal arts college, right? So learning is for learning's sake, right? Um, and then on the other end is, you know, maybe our professional, pre-professional programs of, you know, we're here, we're building skills so that students can go out and be, you know, professionals living lives of purpose and meaning, right? Um, but, but the majority of people fall somewhere on this spectrum, right? And so to me... Um, I used to spend a lot of time in my my career trying to convert the the <laughs> the one end, right? If I could just convince them like this is important too and you know all students need to do this and all of that. And I just realized um and heard this great phrase from um Kathy Davies who who was out of the the studio, the life design studio, who who just said go with the goers. And to me that's it. I say it all the time. Because sometimes you can get pulled down in like, but what, but what, but what, what if, uh, like, no, we're going to go with the goers. And to me, that's what this is about. We're going with the goers, right? My goal is not to con make every faculty or staff member a career champion, right? But it's like, okay, who's out there who gets this, who is also passionate about helping students with career success? Let's find those people and let's just make sure they have the tools and skills that they need to get students to the next step, right? And so to me, that's what this is about. So, you know, if we just had gotten eight, awesome. Then we would have done it for eight, right? Now, maybe below that, probably not. We'd probably do like <laughs> individual, right? Um, but I think if we just continue to grow, then we maybe we'll have a movement. And, you know, a lot of people said I'm on sabbatical, but will you include me next year? So I already think we'll have, you know, quite a few in our next cohort. So I'm just going with the goers. I love that phrase. I'm going to have to write that down so I remember it. Yeah, I love it too. I love it too. So many times simple. I get pulled into the other and it's too much time wasted. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I suppose by including that question on the student survey that I think is something like what faculty member has inspired you or yeah. something like that. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. had, a, had a positive impact on your career exploration or career success. Okay. Yeah, I imagine a question like that and the people who get nominated automatically means they're probably going to be the faculty that's more inclined to be more active with students and have those conversations. So, yeah, again, this and just what was, <laughs> what was so great about it, too, is that that's how I started the request. And so many people were like, wow, I'm so flattered. I mean, a lot of people, oh. again, right, they had no idea. It's not like they say, okay, we're going to talk about career now, and that's part of their agenda with students. You can realize, like, they have no idea the impact they might be having. And that's what's so beautiful about it. You know, like, wow, someone thought that I had an impact on their career. That's special. Yeah, and that's so meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. I hadn't even thought about that part of it. But, of course, like, not only will they be flattered to be mentioned, but I imagine that makes them even more inclined to want to learn how to do more 
Exactly. And to realize they have an impact, right? This is important. You got to pay attention. I need to do this right, you know? <laughs> right. Isn't that, why, isn't that why most of us would work in higher ed? Because we want to have an impact on yeah. students, ideally. <laughs> I know. I can't quit. I can't quit this uh, higher ed thing. <laughs> well, you're already 30 years in. I know. You must love it. <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, all right. Well, I want to talk a little bit about, a little bit more about your Career Center website, um, since that's kind of a really key part of this session that you're doing with faculty. Yeah. So can you just walk me through a little bit more about how it's structured, how you built it, um, the resources you have on it, anything else that you think is relevant? Sure. Sure. Well, um, I mean, this is hard because I think I like am like most people out there. Uh, this is my this is my sixth position, and I've just been in Augustana about five years. And so, every place I'd been, you know, in the in the '90s, I was learning HTML, and we were writing our own <laughs> websites, right? And then in in the 2000s, there were the web editors. So I just worked at a place where I had I was able to you know, easily write my own content and have control of my own website. Um, and then I came to Augustana and I, apparently this is a model that many schools have where really the, the common marketing department has control of that. And so the messaging is really external facing, right? And, and um, realizing that the website was not an option for us to be able to connect with current students. So we used our platform Handshake and um, and that's great for a lot of things, and and I'm a big fan of Handshake, but in terms of the resource delivery and the functioning and the um, the design and aesthetic of it, it was really lacking, and we needed a website. So I mean, lo and behold, thank God um, for David, but um, at UConnect, but UConnect really. Um, if you if you don't know, which I'm sure you do, Meredith, but if you don't know, you know the 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 story and the passion from the founder, who was a student who came back, had no idea, wasn't as plugged in into career, and thought like, why don't more students know about the career centers at colleges? And created a product that was really about that connecting students to resources that are already available to them, right? Well, guess what? That's exactly what I needed. And I remember this was a four-year, like, how can we crack this nut? I got an email from Ryan, and I thought, all right, I remember you connect. And there, there it went. So we were able to very easily trans transfer all of our content. So we already had most of our content. It was just a matter of getting it in a different platform, which, you know, is all, always a painful process, but um, it was pretty easy. And we were able to build our website in about two and a half months. Um, and we launched. And from the day we launched, it was, you know, we've got, we use a QR code. Thank God they came back. You know, they were popular in the <laughs> mid early 2000s. They came back. So we use a QR code and our traffic is we just had our first year report and uh, we've got really great numbers. So, um, I mean, it's the best thing that we've ever done. We have students now who can access and get the resources that they need without having to come into our office or without having to have a personal invitation. But they can they can find it and then come in and say, this was helpful. I need help with this little piece and how I fit in. So. I can't say enough about it. <laughs> well, I, I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, working for you, Connect. Um, I'm curious. You mentioned the QR code. Where are you putting that? In, like places throughout campus, and that's how people can get to your website. Yeah, it's. We should have it be called Career QR Code Everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we have. We have sandwich boards all over campus with it. We have stickers, you know, the stickers on your computers with it. Um, we use a QR code with our event check-in as well. And right next to that then is the website QR code. So we use QR codes and it's the same one, right, for the website um, everywhere. Um, it's on all of our documents, all of our, yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> It's got to get that career I don't know if everywhere. That the question, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. You I was are just curious. Career codes everywhere. Right? <laughs> cool. 
cool. Yeah, I was just curious kind of how you were using that particular strategy. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I imagine too, with the website, it's probably really helpful having everything kind of in one place, especially when you're doing these presentations, like to faculty or to admissions, to students. Yeah, it really is because um, what I can do is I can do a Canva or a PowerPoint, but when I get to this part, I just close out of that and I'm just live on the website and I'm showing them and then I'll say, okay, you know, what? what is the last thing a student asked you? And I don't have to, you know, open five different things or find the login to this, that, or the other. I just click on it. Um, through our website and because we are connected it's connected uh, integrated because of all of our different integrations it's it's really easy students don't have to log in and out to to a lot of different things and that's really great there's also ways that we can put some resources that um, like I teach a course right now and so we can put some resources on there that uh, it's for faculty and staff that they can access, but it's password protected. So there, there's great functionality there as well. And the coolest thing, honestly, is so because we, we um, pull them and we get our students to be able to um, subscribe to different communities, then we can send out information. So we send a weekly newsletter and all of that is curated content for that particular um, affinity group. And so um, that way we're not spamming students with stuff that's not relevant, but what's getting to them is very specific for what they have said that they're interested in. So... I love it. I love it. And it's all automated. I mean, I need to spend time setting it up, but once it's set up, it just, it goes. And I can just sit back and look at all the numbers, all the views, (laughs) all the clicks. And perhaps most importantly, you have control over it. You are not having to go to a marketing team and try and be like, hey, I need this copy change, or I want to add this article or this video. You can just do it. I can just do it. And I've got a team of students who help me as well. So like, for example, right now we're, um, after this call, I'm meeting with my alumni. I have an alumni board career development committee and there's maybe 18 people and they've all written a blog post, a guest blog post, super easy through Uconnect, right? And then I just go in and I tweak it and I put in some fun pictures. And now for the rest of the semester, once a week, we'll have an alum highlight. And once that's set up, I don't have to do anything. So again, super easy. Don't have to get anyone's permission. I don't have to lobby for it to happen. I just make it happen. And then you can spend your valuable time doing something else. (laughs) Right, something else, right. (laughs) All right. Uh, So I'm kind of curious, how has this website and your this session as part of your Career Readiness Champions Network program, how has it all enhanced or increased awareness of the work that you and your team are doing or even the perception of the work that you're doing? And how has it changed? I, I think, how, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest piece is the perception, right? So that when we, when we can show them that, A, we even know the word affinity group, right? And B, to show them, like, we have resources for all of all of these students. Um, I think that gives a sense. It, it garners respect, right? And they can see us as a, um, a tool to get to the resources and uh, the expertise for students. Um, also, it takes away that whole piece of that we're just a resume shop and that we just he- help business majors. Um, because we know, I always say like accounting, yeah, we love it when they come in, but they don't really need a career center, right? They can find (laughs) the job on their own, at least in this economy. It's, it's all those other students, right? That, so when we show that everyone's welcome and there's resources for everyone, regardless of X, Y, and Z, I think that really helps, um, you know, this is a great example. We have made huge strides with public health. So there are some col- some departments that really, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's kind of straddles the line of uh, 
pre-professional science, social sciences kind of does that. And so the, the faculty who are in there, they're practitioners, right? So because they're practitioners and they've been practitioners, they believe, and it's true, that they know how to do a job search in public health. And they have all the information. And how possibly could a woman from career services who has to be a generalist know, right? And I get that. I totally get that. Um, but there are pieces of that, right, that are universal. And so having relationships and having that person come to our career pieces I, I mean, I can't even tell you how that's opened up that space between our two departments. I have a f career coach who f specializes in health sciences, and she's been invited. She was invited to actually take the professional preparation course for our public health majors. And she took that whole course, and now they're she's doing a lot of the sessions she's coming in and sharing the pieces that are universal career right that are the the etiquette the linkedin you know all of those pieces and then the 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 faculty is really taking that what is the public health piece what's the difference here you know and so they're basically partnering to help those students and if we hadn't if we'd gotten disturbed or uh, just uh, if we've gotten waylaid by the idea that, oh, they don't need our help, then we don't need to help them versus saying, like, how can we work together? Like, help us understand more about how public health is different than ours. You know, that could have turned out differently, but it's, it's a wonderful partnership. So I think that, that that really is the key, and that's our goal in doing all of this by partnering with faculty and staff. Right. Just building that trust and credibility. I mean, that alone is huge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, after your three decades in career services and all this work, <laughs> all this work you've I done with so this. I old, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> experienced. Very experienced. Yes. yes. Seasoned, um, I like to say. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, with all the experience that you have and all this work that you've been doing with the Career Readiness Champions Network, what advice would you give to other career services leaders who want to get faculty more familiar with their career resources? Um, I, you know, I kind of already said this part, but I'll say it again. Go with the goers, right? Um, use the people that collaborate with those that are willing to collaborate with you. Don't neglect the ones who, you know, are all in and you don't even have to worry about them, but don't neglect them. Thank them. Make sure that they're recognized um, to their supervisors. I know we may think that faculty, you know, they just keep their folder of things for tenure and promotion, but, um, you know, faculty who already have tenure and who've already been promoted, they need that as well as our, as our staff um, members. So keeping doing that. And then also really, like you said, like I'm coming up on 30 years in this field and, you know, we can't do things the way we did 30 years ago. We can't do the way things the way we did 10 years ago, five years ago, right? These students are different. Um, the, the tools and resources and technology is different. And we were just having this conversation. I'm, I'm president of an organization where we just had like our 38th career fair, 38th annual career fair. And, you know, we had abysmal student turnout. And, you know, what we want to do is sit and, you know, rehash the whole thing. And I'm just like, is this is this what we need to do, right? Is a career fair a thing still, right? And, you know, is busing students two and a half hours to a city, you know? So I think that's it, is the advice is like, we need to let go of some of this antiquated way of doing things. And maybe we still do an event, but what does it look like, right? And how are we partnering with our employers? What do they need? Are we talking to our constituents? And so always growing, always changing, and not being afraid to, to try new things. And I think, you know, I'm sure people think I'm old, um, but I don't feel old. And I don't feel like this is the same old thing every day. 
And I think that's because I'm going to continue to, to grow and develop and, and see how we can meet the needs of the students sitting in front of us rather than the, the ways things used to be. Because they used to be great. I mean, I used to get 900 students at programs. Ha! Be happy wow. to get 90. <laughs> it just, the world doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah, I suppose that's part of this evolution to kind of investing in your online and your digital presence because, yes. yeah, students may not be as inclined to show up to event an event at this time in this place. Instead, they're going to want to do some research at 10 p.m. before bed or 2 a.m., yeah. whatever floats their boat. Like, right, right. And just maybe after a conversation with their parents about what they're going to do after graduation, right? True. I mean, it's a just in time, like, oh, I guess I should Google career services. Well, we want our URL, our hit to come up for them and then pull them in. Yeah, for sure. Or I imagine like, I know for me as an alumna, like I, I wish my institution had kind of the labor market data that you have, because oh, I'm yeah. thinking like, as you go through your career, let's say you get a great job offer or and you, or you want to negotiate salary, you could go to Augustana's website and look up salary data and have that information whenever you need it to just go and make an educated negotiation. Exactly, exactly. And a lot of those other platforms, you have to log in, you have mm -hmm. to give them your personal information, you have to answer a bunch of questions. Exactly. exactly. Or if you use BLS data, it's six to 12 months old. <laughs> <laughs> or or older. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. Well, Laura, I want to be uh, cognizant of our time here, so I'll start kind of wrapping this up. But is there anything else about this topic of getting faculty familiar with career resources that you would like to add or any questions that I didn't ask that I should have? I would say just just as as our students um their needs change, their learning styles change. Um, so do our faculty, right? I mean, faculty, we, we're getting new faculty every day. Um, and so just remember that uh, to pay attention to the new faculty. Welcome them. If they're new to campus, I mean, gosh, a, a request for a lunch or come over for a visit, you know, that can go really far. And those those are the ones that, you know, are going to, most faculty stick around a long time, right? So that's a time well invested in getting to know new faculty. So that would be to be one thing to add. Okay, great. Well, Laura, if it, people would like to connect with you or learn more from you, where is a good place for them to do that? Well, I'm a, I'm a Gen Xer, so I still use email all the time. <laughs> So email, if you have questions, you can connect with me on LinkedIn, of course. Our Twitter and Insta feeds are all done by uh, our marketing person. So it'll get to me, but if you want something, <laughs> email me. Okay. And I'll make sure to include your email in the show notes as well. Okay. Great. All right. And now to close this out, I'm going to do our typical answer a question, leave a question thing. So Laura, I will ask you a question that our last guest left for you, and then you'll leave a question for the next guest. So our last guest was Sharon Belden Castingway of Wesleyan University, and she left you this question. A trustee of your college decides to give you $5 million for the Career Center. How do you spend it? I, you know, I have a whole plan already mapped out. So um, I would love to create a center that is sort of like a Venn diagram that it's threefold. So uh, career and life design center where we're helping students with career and life design. We're helping faculty and staff learn and teach career and life design. Then we have an outward facing where we're helping our immediate community. We sit in an impoverished um, area um, and really build up that community. And then the, the revenue generating piece would be offering um, design thinking concepts to the corporations in our, in our area. So um, I've got a whole plan. And, you know, as soon as Sharon finds that, um, that trustee and wants to share it between Wesleyan and, and Augustana, I'd be happy to, to connect with her. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And I'm not surprised at all that you already have a whole plan. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Well, I, like the second day our new president started, I just said, just dreaming over here in career, and I sent it over to her. <laughs> nice. Wait, be proactive. May as well get yeah, it on yeah. the radar. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Oh, but well, I do have a question for the next person. Am yes. I supposed to say it now? Yes. What do question would you like to leave? So I am so curious about how people are addre- addressing the use of chat GTP with students around their job search materials. Because oh. I'll be honest, I sent a love poem to my husband using chat GTP chat gtp and it was pretty good and so i thought "Ooh, how can we do this so i'm just curious really how you are addressing its use in the job search process oh interesting i hadn't even thought of that particular use case for it reference okay. letters thank yous i mean oh it's quite astounding hmm that mm-hmm. is a great question, Laura. I am excited to yeah. hear the answer to you that one. You need to call in topic for that. That's what you need. Do they do call ins on webcasts? No. Or on, on podca- these? podcasts? Yeah. You could. <laughs> I weird. could do a live audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Uh, well, cool. All right. I'll make sure to ask the next guest that question. Um, and then, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. It was really great to chat with you about kind of getting faculty more familiar with career resources. And I know that's going to be a very relevant topic for a lot of our listeners. So thank you very much for sharing your time and your knowledge. Well, thank you. I had a great time talking with you and I'm excited to to share this. And if we can help get more students connected to their dreams, then that's the better. That's what it's all about, right? Absolutely. (laughs) 